Welcome back to Pathfinder Kingmaker. Now, we have several things that we need to do in the capital, like leveling up certain things. Um, we've completed this one. We have to wait for the arrest Morhalan. Uh, Ekken needs to track him down. Uh, I guess... This one is something we have one of the uh, one of the advisors on since it's a kingdom quest. Um, but we have 118 days left. We're going to go claim the lover's grave, and I also thought we would uh, pop up quickly to the uh, arbor rock. Let's claim that and see what has happened in the kingdom. In the name of the law, um, I don't know what this does. Plus three loyalty. Okay. Opportunity. Let's ignore that. But what the heck? Oh, he's still hunting. Okay. He just doesn't show up here. That is strange. It's on projects, not events. Okay. Well, that's done. Let's take a trip up to Arbor Rock. We might want to or need to rest it's on our way there. Some rest, isn't it? Speaking of which, Jubalas, you've been to many countries, seen many different customs. There are places where a sharp word nets you a knife in the back. Very true. But on the other hand, I'm not helpless either. My words might sometimes be painful, but a vial of alchemical fire hurts a good deal more. <coughs> yep. Let's enter the Arbor Rock. Hopefully it's just one of these small locations. <laughs> yeah, this isn't too bad. Our path leads on. No idea what this place has to offer. Apparently there's a cave here. And some random stuff on the ground. How about down there? It's a dead body here. With shells on it. Without a doubt. Okay. Let's head up to the cave then and uh You never know what might be in random caves, so I'll save the game before we go in there. Forwards. Cobwebs. We'll do it. Rift Elementals. Okay, so there's a hammer here. Regular Warhammer plus one. And a diamond. Thank you. Uh, so, any brilliant ideas? No, I thought you might have some, but... Okay, that's about it. Oh, that was a... an uneventful location. Now, there is this other location very nearby. But when I hover over that, it shows me a... It's the Talon Peak. It shows me a rather wicked path to get to that. Also, I believe that this is... Inside of Varnhold. Let me just check my map here. A bit difficult to see. 
Need some light. Might also help not having it upside down. Yeah. Getting to the Talon Peak is uh, quite the feat, actually. So, uh, we won't be going there at the moment. <laughs> Need to pause the recording momentarily. There we go. I don't think it would have been very enjoyable to listen to me sniffle all the time. Um, okay, let's head back to the capital then. In the name of the law, uh, that was an opportunity, I'm not concerned with that. Seven days left on the hunting for the... Uh, God, that I don't remember the name of at the moment. Teleport. You can teleport to Port Martin. Probably should have upgraded that one. And not that one. Although this is close to the river crossing. And when it comes to the next one, I don't think we're going to upgrade any of the ones we have. I think we want possibly Varnhold. And if we can build a village like, say, here in the Darnall Marches, that would probably be the next location so that I can teleport all the way over there instead of having to walk through this horrible, horrible bog. Anyways, let's get inside the capital and I guess we can go to the main square first and I can uh, pause the recording while I uh, do some uh, tendering. And I think that maybe I will pause the recording for other things there as well because all I plan... Well, no, I can't do that really. It would make sense because I'm going to spend 14 days leveling up this and 14 days leveling up that, but then all of a sudden the advisors come and uh, ask us to uh, attend to things and yeah. So, okay, I will not pause the recording for that. Hopefully you'll all enjoy it though, but I will pause the recording for this. So, yeah. I just had a thought. I think it would be a good idea to actually go do the uh, quest with uh, Kaleke before we start leveling up things, because if I'm going to unlock more advisor slots, I would rather have companions being the advisors than... Uh... Oh, bother. What am I carrying that is weighing so much that I can't deal with it? I have multiple bags of holding. Guessing the combination of everything is what makes it so heavy. Okay, I'll pause again and go stash them in the... Well, I won't pause until I've actually gotten into the throne room, just in case. But, uh, yeah. I have to travel alone up there, so... Yeah, there we go. Oken comes with an acerbic ring for us. Uh, let's make him craft items and not potions. I have no use for potions. Okay, then I'll pause and stash stuff in the chest. And uh, I will unpause again when we are back out on the uh, map. Here we are. Of course, I remembered after I left the capital that what weighs so, so much in our inventory is uh, these. This is 250 pounds. And I didn't need to bring all of these with me. Ten of them would have sufficed for Caledon alone.
Kalika smiles faintly as you approach, but you can't help but notice that she's as tense as a bowstring. Three young tieflings wearing bright clothing, the sort one might find in a harlequin's wardrobe, are gathered near Kalike, fidgeting from foot to foot. They bow simultaneously. The youngest cast you an inquisitive look. So this is the patron you found, Elder, the baron of this land. And to think that Canera used to say that you don't know how to make connections. Ah, uh ah. -uh. The short-haired tiefling girl steps on her friend's tail. Stop it, Naiho. Don't you see you're upsetting her? Forgive him, Elder, and you too, Your Grace. When Naiho was little, a donkey knocked over his crib. His horns got caught on its saddle cloth and he was dragged for half a block, bumping his head on every corner. Now he's no more clever than the donkey. That's a creative uh, version of... Uh, Bumping a child's head. Kalike stomps her foot, drawing their attention. Sweet teeth, that's enough. You're going right back to the city. The Baron and I need to talk in private, and we are going to the Taldan Tower without you. It might be dangerous. As you say, Elder. The last of the three tieflings, who had kept quiet until now, nods and gestures to the others. We will go to the city, and we'll see if three tail-swinging goofs like us can find gainful employment around there. If you, decided, if you decided to settle down in these parts, maybe we can find a place here too. Goodbye, Your Grace. Please remind me, what is this place, and what are we looking for here? It's an ancient Taldan settlement, long ago ravaged by the elements. They used to mine ore in these rocks. Little is known about what happened here, but according to rumours, a terrible flood devastated the town. Many citizens perished, the others fled. Only the tower remains, standing on the cliff. The flood wasn't able to reach it. The tower may still hold substantial riches, and among them, the Disk of the Eclipse, a relic from a Kadiran temple of Nethys. That's what I'm looking for. And uh, who were those three tieflings? My friends from Kadira. Their names are Naiho, Tevi and Elki, but I just usually call them the Sweet Teeth. They're always together and always act and speak in chorus. It was they who dug up the history of this place and told me of the treasury. But they never got inside. They say there is a lot of dangerous beasts ahead. Kalik is sighs. I'm happy that at least someone from my past life hasn't abandoned me. But they make me anxious as well. The Sweet Teeth know nothing about what happened after our escape. They think Kanara died and I adopted a strange new name to hide from my past. But they know me and my sister well and could easily uncover the truth. That would breach Nethys's first condition. That's why it would be better for all of us if we met as rarely as possible. Besides, Canera, Canera nearly fed the poor sweet teeth to wild animals. Though it seems now like ages ago. What's our plan? There must be a cliff somewhere ahead where we will find the remains of the tower. We'll need to climb it and search the ruins. And be ready for trouble. One can never be too careful. Well, are we ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Kalike nods gratefully. Thank you. I'm glad I don't have to walk this road alone. That looks ominous. Uh, flying crossbow. Crossbow. Okay. Uh, uh, she needs to be leveled up. Like, I think she's level 5, and I will not I'm level 10. Okay, I'll pause the recording while I do that, because that's going to take some time, because I have no idea how to deal with a kineticist. Okay, so that's the first level done. Uh, gave her a familiar little tarantula, and I gave her athletics and perception, even though... Um, 
stealth might have been a better choice since that was the stat that already were uh, leveled up. But as you can see, Caledon has zero perception. She at least has now 10, which I think is uh, useful. So moving on to the next level, here we are. I gave her weapon focus, kinetic blast, and she seems to be specialized in water uh, element. So she, uh, I gave her ice blast, cold blast, and then the kinetic blade abilities come with that. And also one to athletics and one to perception. So next level. Here we are. I gave her one point of dexterity and the kinetic ability healing burst. Which seems useful. And then athletics and perception again. And I would say I have absolutely no clue about kineticists whatsoever. I'm not used to... Um, Pathfinder, I'm used to Dungeons and Dragons, and I haven't played Dungeons and Dragons except for the fifth edition, which doesn't have any kind of kineticists in it. They used to be psionicists in the, back in the days. So I, I'm literally clueless about these uh, kineticists, but they seem cool. They do that. Next level. So, again, athletics and perception the improved initiative feat and the spindle ability which looks useful um, and also metakinesis maximized seems to have appeared not that i'm sure how since it says at fifth level and she's ninth level but oh right at ninth level by accepting two points of burn she can maximize her kinetic blast as if as if using maximize spell oh that's a useful ability then and then the final level here we are i took a kineticist bonus feat for water and took bull rush not sure if that's going to be useful or not but yep and that has leveled her up um hopefully she will well, i am ready God, I'm I'm glad that you are ready. Get out your little tarantula and uh, let's go. I will guide us. There's some ferocious slurks down there. Something is wrong. I feel a disturbance in the elements of water. I think we want her to be in front of Caledorn. Do not go back. This quick. This ends you. Yeah, I rip it to you as well. She's been slimed. That's a very pretty waterfall. Okay. Our path leads on. Our time has come. I think it is time to use some uh, more efficient ways of dealing with these. And we don't really need to use the controlled ones, but that's all I have at the moment, so. Medium water elemental. They seem friendly though. We shall overcome. Stop sliming me. How does this kinetic blast work? Oh. Water elementals whirl anxiously but make no move to attack. Kalike is obviously commanding their attention. The creature's bodies ripple and they freeze and face the girl. This is what I felt. 
these creatures, we belong to the same elemental force. The girl leans forward. I could be wrong, but I feel they are seething, as if yearning for freedom. They cannot leave, and they've been trapped in this place for a long time. An incredibly long time. Let's use the detect magic. The seal has a strong aura. It appears as though a magical trap has tied the elementals to this place. Water elementals at a settlement that perished from a sudden flood. Kalika's eyes are full of sorrow. Yes, it seems that somehow... No, it seems that someone used them to kill the Taldans and thus just abandoned them here. But who? Who would use such powerful magic only to kill some simple miners? The past hides so many secrets. What will happen if we set the elementals free? Could we? I doubt they would attack. They suffer here under the ruthless, ruthless sun, far from the elemental, their elemental forces. They seem happy to see me and are pleading for help. I understand. Let's see what we can do. The question is how? I don't I think I have any ready. spells that do that. I don't think I have any scrolls either. No. Oh well. I don't need that buckler. Forwards. It would appear though that freeing them would be a good thing. The only question is how. Let me just look that up quickly. Ah, of course. Why didn't I think of that? And I shall answer. Come on, you're supposed to. Don't tell me you forgot how to use it. They look like uh, tentacle beings, like octopods. The elementals billow and shiver anxiously. They seem distrustful of their newfound freedom. Twisted masses of water resembling... No, that's not arms, that's tentacles. Extend forward as if pointing to something ahead. Then one of the elementals utters a word in an unfamiliar language as it reaches out to Kalike. They seem to be saying danger ahead, and they are ready to help us if we need help. The word he said is some kind of name or call. As if knowing their message had been understood, the elementals rush away to their long-desired freedom. Climb up here then. Kalike throws back her head and looks upward. Up there! There's a tower there, on the cliff. But it will be difficult to climb such a steep slope. Kalike gives you a pensive and sad smile. My sister and I used to climb cliffs together. She was so angry when I was faster, but she always helped me when she got ahead. Let's just use the rope. Just one rope. Succeeded at, the, at an athletics check. Kalike climbs the cliff with the dexterity of a lizard, but you go stride for stride with her, easily keeping up. Soon the top of the cliff, cliff lays before you. What a beautiful place! And cozy! The cliff seems to embrace this place. She's friendly, I'll give her that. And a waterfall! 
Now I see why the Taldons decided to settle here. I'd live here too. Yes, it is quite beautiful. The remains of a Taldon Adit? Adit? It seems from the outside that the bolt caved in, and it's hopeless to move the rubble. We will prevail. Um. Contemplate on your mistakes. I need to sneeze. Kalike wearily looks around the area. The tower, it's destroyed and I, I'm afraid. Is that? Kalike points at the ruins. A frightening gargoyle is sitting among them. Is it even a gargoyle? The jewels the monster has gathered in its nest glimmering here and there, but the brightest treasure of all is a small disc lying at its feet. It glistens white like incandescent metal, but a moment later it is covered by abysmal blackness. Then it flashes white again. The disc of the eclipse! That must be it! But how do we... The girl freezes mid-sentence, her eyes wide open, and then... You look into the eyes of a tiefling girl as she emerges from the portal and she raises her brow expressively. Caladorn, it is such a wonderful day and what a view! It is nice to see you again, Canera. You detect a glimmer of fear in the girl's eyes, but she quickly shakes it off and snaps her tail angrily. Let me guess, my sweet sister couldn't hold her tongue? She broke the god's orders and revealed our secret? Uh, to tell you the truth, I was sure all this would come out sooner or later, but it's nice to know I wasn't the fool who let it slip. Canera keeps silent for a few moments, contemplating her new situation, but then she smiles coyly. Tell me, Caladorn, didn't we say goodbye in a luxurious banquet hall in rest of the day you receive your barony? And now we're sitting all alone at the top of a cliff in some backwater, surrounded by slimy flesh-eating toads and other revolting monsters. I don't even know which questions to ask first. Why or how? Your sister asked me to find an artifact. An artifact? It doesn't happen to be the disk of the eclipse, does it? Of course, it was I who first told you about it, but I imagine us, it is, us sitting cozy by the fire in your castle while your servants went off to collect it. But oh well, an adventure it is then. But it seems our treasure has been stolen by that ugly gargoyle. So, what are we supposed to do now? We freed the water elementals who seem friendly. They will help us defeat the gargoyle. So, we let them fight instead of us, right? So we can stand back and watch? Canera smiles coyly. Uh, no, we won't abandon them in battle. We'll fight together. Canera wrinkles her nose. As you wish, Your Grace. We'll risk our lives for animated puddles. Fine, let's call them. Defeat is not an option. She needs to be leveled up again uh, too, but. blindness on that thing. Oh, 
Oh, that's easy. So, some diamond dust. Lots of uh, jewelry and uh, natural armor per uh, amulet. Disk of the Eclipse. Let's see what we have here. Canera's tail dances just above the ground, giving away the tiefling's excitement. She's obviously anxious to grab the disc of the eclipse, but waits for you to nod. Let's detect the magic here. You easily find the disc's aura. It is an intricate artifact, but it doesn't seem especially powerful. But you notice something else. Traces of a much stronger aura nearby. It seems that someone very powerful was here before you and did something to the disc. Canera, I sense something strange, as if someone was here right before us and did something to the disc. The tiefling seems surprised. Someone was here before us, found the treasures and the artifact but didn't take them. So strange. Well, we aren't going to use the disc right now anyway, are we? We'll just take it to the capital and examine it there. Fine, take the disc. The girl quickly grabs the artifact with both hands, and that very instant you hear a very loud sound, like a clap. And Canera is enveloped in a cocoon of white light, which quickly turns to darkness. You hear voices whispering and interrupting each other. They seem to be speaking in images, not natural words. Black, white, bound, split, indivisible. Then the strange phenomena ends as quickly as it began. The darkness disappears, and Canera is standing just where she was, seemingly intact, but the disc in her hands is gone. Are you alright? What? Canera seems to barely hear you. She shakes her head a few times as if she's emerging from a dream. Amazing. I didn't expect this. Listen, the artifact didn't disappear. I can feel it, like it's a part of me now, and I think I... I think I know how to use it. Kalika looks at you in complete astonishment. Caladorn? What what just happened? I was sleeping in the demiplane, but this time I wasn't pulled out like it pulled out of it like usual. It's like I heard a voice. Canera's voice. Canera and I recovered the disc of the eclipse, and it affected her in a strange way. So what I felt and heard was the influence of the disc. But it's so strange. Kalike closes her eyes and stands still. Her dark hair moves in the wind, but nothing happens for about a minute. Then, without opening her eyes, she begins to move her hand. Yes, now I understand. Hello again. Ugh, are we still here in Sorrowflow? So my sweet sister learned how to use our new abilities so quickly. I was sure it would take her a year. I'm going to try to switch us again. Please tell her, tell her for me that she's a foolish goat. Kalike looks even more stunned. I'm back again, and again I heard my sister calling me. I felt it inside just like my bond to the elemental forces. Now we can switch places whenever we wish. <coughs> um, your sister asked me to tell you that you're a foolish goat. Nah. Your sister asked me to tell you to give a nice big hug to the wonderful Baron who helped you so much. Really? Kalike looks sincerely surprised and a little embarrassed. I, I could, if you're comfortable with that, of course. Now, wouldn't that be an ar the irony? An Asimar and a tiefling couple? <laughs> I'm only joking, but you know, I'd be happy if you hugged me at some point. Kalike becomes even more embarrassed. I... you don't mean... Oh, it doesn't matter. Why do I always fall for such obvious jokes? So, you can now switch whenever you want to. Yes. Oh, there are so many thoughts in my head. It's a miracle that we found such a rare artifact that could help us. Or perhaps Nethys planned this all along. And what should we do with this new gift? 
Now, my sister and I must decide how to divide the time we share. Kalika sh shakes her head. Yes, I'll think about all this and many other things. But for now, I wish to thank you, Kaladorn. If a foreign outcast's gratitude means anything to you, you have it. And one more thing, I'd like to remain in your lands and help you with your quests and travels. Now that we can better control our switches, we won't have to keep running from one place to another. I think Canera will support my idea. What do you say? You'll be most welcome. May this be the beginning of a wonderful journey. So what's up with this uh, lion statue? An empire so once so great, where is your strength? Does the same fate await us? No answer. Did I get everything here? There's some edible moss. How do I get back over there then? Taldor and Kadira were rivals for ages. It's so strange to wander around these ruins. A feud can be stronger than blood ties, and blood ties can be much like a feud. Okay, um... I think that I'll end the episode here, and I'll just travel back to the capital. And then we'll start doing all of those uh, kingdom things that need to be done. Um, well, let's travel back down into the uh, kingdom so that we can see. I hope that the barony uh, quest for the uh, that guy who uh, was skinning lizardmen is nearing completion. Cheap publicity opportunity failed. Oh, that's fine. Same with the combat priests. Now, okay. Tragedy at the mine. The local stone mine had a rock slide. The stone merchants have jacked up the prices and construction materials are running short. That definitely needs to be attended to. And the high priest wants us to talk. Okay. Well, yeah. That will be in the next episode then. I won't go into the throne room, room until I can um, start recording. So thank you all so much for joining me, and I will see you all then.